What's up everybody, 32 Icon here. I hope you guys are doing well. I'm doing well myself. Please go ahead and like and subscribe and share if you haven't already in good faith that I will continue bringing you great content. Oh, and I'm just another YouTube personality, so take what I said with a grain of salt and do your own research, okay? All right, so listen, today I'm going to answer the question, will my holster scratch my gun? All right, so I've had people in the comment section ask me, hey Liv, what holster can I get that won't scratch my gun? Or, hey Liv, if I get this holster, will it scratch my gun? Etc. Etc. So I'm gonna dive in and give you my experience with with uh, holsters and if it did indeed scratch my gun. So, will my holster scratch my gun? Short answer is yes, it will. But let me explain. So, when I first started shooting, um, I wanted a holster that wouldn't scratch my gun, and I YouTubed all these videos, and people said yes, it will, and people said no, it won't. But ultimately. If you use your firearm and you're practicing, you're dry firing, you're drawing and doing all the stuff that you're supposed to do to really make sure that you are uh, very experienced with your handgun, that you know it inside and out, you're taking classes, you are going to the range, you are doing all the necessary things that you need to do be to become proficient, you will indeed scratch your gun. Now, here's the good thing about it. It is okay. All right. It is okay. That means that most times it means that you know what you're doing or you're on a path to being more proficient with handling your firearm. So my MMP 1.0 is empty, by the way. Um, this was my first gun and I told you guys several times before that I did everything with this gun. I carried it, I brought it to the range. It was my uh, personal defense um, tool at home. I, I love this, I mean, I love this gun. This gun has the most rounds of any other firearm that I have. But when I bought a holster, this holster is from Vetter Holsters. This is when their company was still kind of new. And um, I bought their holster and I started using it. And one day I happened to look down at my firearm and I noticed, as you can see here, I noticed there was a scratch. And I'm like, uh-uh, I know I didn't spend all this money for this gun and this holster and it scratched. And then I started doing some research on videos and I see that there were several um, YouTubers that said, yes, that's what happens when you are practicing. I mean, I was in the kitchen practicing my drawing. I went down to the basement. I had my little target up on the wall. I'm drawing. I'm, um, you know, and then you got to remember when you're drawn, it's like. So over time, it is going to wear. It doesn't matter what type of coating you have on there. You can have a DLC finish, Cerakote, spray paint, what have you. If you work your gun, it eventually will scratch. Now, that's not to say that the holster you have isn't good. This is a better holster. You guys know that I love better holsters. The problem is I was using it. Right? I was becoming proficient with it. Now, I'm going to show you another example of a firearm that I have where I carried it. But when I go back and I think about it, I didn't practice really drawing it as much as I did with the MMP. This is the HK, and it's empty, VP9SK. You guys know in previous videos that I talked about, um, this particular firearm as being one of the most carried firearms in my uh, safe. I carry this firearm a lot and I brought it to the range a lot, but I didn't practice drawing as much as I did with my MMP. And if you look at the slide, you will see more dust and debris than you will see... Um, I'm trying to cover up my uh, serial number, then you will see any type of scratches on it. You don't see any scratches, not as much as you did on the previous one. Maybe a little bit. Actually, I see more debris than I do scratches because, again, a better holster. I wasn't 
as much as I was doing it with the MMP 1.0. Now, I'm gonna show you another firearm. This is the Glock 45 and nine millimeter. Now, this is the firearm that I took to the Tatiana Whitlock class, and I have been recently carrying this. Because it's a bigger firearm, and um, I haven't carried this in years. So I've been carrying mainly compacts and subcompacts. When I got to this, I was like, oh, it has a longer grip. The light is protruding beyond the muzzle. So um, I'm gonna have to practice a little bit more with this. So of course, here I go. Right, drawing, practicing, bringing it to the range. Took it to the class. Now, if you look at the slide, look at the front of the muzzle, you'll see wear. Now, it's not a lot of wear, but it lets you know that I was training with it, becoming more proficient with it, utilizing it as much as possible, um, taking it in and out of the holster. I mean, at the Tatiana Whitlock class, we were drawn, standing up, sitting down on the floor, you know, um, doing a whole bunch of stuff where I was really running it through his paces. And so it wasn't until I got back from that class that I was like, oh, let me clean my gun and, you know, you know, get it right. And I'm looking, I'm like, oh man, I, you know, I got a little wear in here. Now, a few years ago, I would have been completely upset, right? Not understanding that some wear is good. So I would have been upset, but now that I know that I've been putting in the time behind this, I'm pretty accurate this firearm. In fact, I really like this as an EDC, although I moved on. If you watch my recent videos, you will know that I moved on to the MMP um, 2.0 compact um, in nine millimeter. So I, I moved on, but home defense, home defense. In fact, I have to do another video on that, but yeah, home defense. And my MVP is my EDC. Um, is the, are there interchangeable? Yeah, I mean, I guess I could use the MMP for home defense, but I just really like this firearm. I really do. And so I say all this to say, you can use a Kydex holster, you can use a leather holster. If you're carrying, you're not really dry firing, you're not really, um, practicing your, 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 your draw stroke. If you're not doing those things, you will less likely have wear on your slide. However, if you are putting in the time and you are going to the range, you're practicing your draw stroke, you're bringing it to classes, you are going to begin to develop some character on your gun, right? You are going to have some battle scars from your firearm. And for my newbies, that is a great thing, right? That is a great thing. At the end of the day, if you get tired of looking at it, you can have it Cerakoted, you can have a new finish on it, which will cost you, you know, some money. But if you get the finish on it, if you get the new Cerakote on it and you decide to continue that training, that coat, that uh, new finish will eventually start to fade. It will eventually start to develop scars and scratches and all that good stuff. So the good news is practice, practice, practice. Don't worry about the, the finish and just get right, get proficient with your firearm. Now, I, here's a caveat. I will say this. If you got like a nice, you know, Wilson, Staccato, Dan West, you know, you got a nice little 1911, something like that. I don't know. It depends on your budget. I don't know if you really want to... <laughs> practice and draw and create holster wear on that. I mean, that's up to you. Some people, it doesn't matter. They carry those $3,000, $4,000 guns, $2,000 guns. They carry it. And if it gets holster wear, then it gets holster wear. For me, I'm a baby, you know, those type of guns. But um, listen, if it's a regular polymer frame, or even if you have a quality 1911 that is not in the upper echelon of your finances, then perhaps you don't mind a little holster wear. Now I will add that if you wanna mitigate some of the scratch, that um, this is what I do. I take a little bit of gun oil and um, I'll take the holster, 
and I'll oil it in here, right? I'll just use my finger, oil it, oil it. Um, I'll try to get down in here, some of the contact points, right? I'm not gonna get all the way down in there, but for the most part, I'll get around the edges. I'll take some more oil and I'll oil the uh, the muzzle, I'll, I'll do that. And then I'll do a little of this to make sure that it's rubbed in and then I'll check it to see if it's scratched. If it's scratched anywhere, then I know that's a contact point. And so I will put a little oil there as well. And I've noticed that that worked for me. I'm not sure if other people do that, but um, for the most part, I will say with better holsters, I haven't had that much of an issue when it comes to scratching, but this was my first holster and um, it did scratch, um, but I was also using it a lot. You can also do that to mitigate some of the wear, but it will wear nonetheless. So I've said this already, but listen, run and gun, take classes, dry fire, uh, do all the things that you need to do. And when you start to see that the finish on your slide is wearing, it's starting to scratch up, that is a good thing. That means you are doing what you need to do to become proficient with that particular handgun. So embrace it, welcome it, dwell in it, enjoy it. Listen, these guns are expensive for some folks. So when you are really utilizing your firearm and you getting the most bang for your buck and you making sure that your money didn't go to waste, that is what you want. So that's my opinion. I may differ from others. You let me know how you feel about it. And um, that's all I have for you. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you're doing well. Treat one another with kindness and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.